What is going on guys? We're back. It's day three of the RS rear wheel drive build. Um, so far what we got done since last night, not much because I've been busy around the house and everything, but you know how it goes. So, where are we at? We got the rear diff out and apart, which you guys seen in the last video. Um, we just brake cleaned, and yes, before I hear about it, I used the non-chlorinated brake clean. So we're safe to weld on it. So we got this all apart. We got it cleaned up. We're letting it dry now for a little while. Then we're gonna make up some plates to put in there. We're gonna plate this, weld it all back together. All right, guys. Let me catch up on where we're at. We're about to get to welding the diff. So I got some, um, this is what I just had laying around my shop. I think this is four by quarter, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, four by quarter inch plate. Now, for the pieces we need for in here, it's one by one and a half. So we're cutting a sliver at an inch, then we're gonna cut two pieces of one and a half out of this, using for our plates. So I'm going to cut these quick, I don't want to blind you guys on the camera, so I'm just going to do it off camera right quick, and then I'll show you how we're going to put them in place, tack them, weld them, put it back together. Alright guys, so I made my two little pieces of plate here, you can see them. They are inch and a half this way, by inch this way. Alright, so we got the plates all tacked in, I'll show you how we done that. So get the light, spin the camera. That's it. That's all you got to do really. So I have a pretty high power welder. We're just gonna make weld them, stick a plate in there, and weld that solid. So now we're gonna roll it to the other side and do the same thing, and then I'll catch back up with you guys when we're gonna do the welding of it. And then we're gonna roll into the other side. What's up guys? So, first and foremost, I'm condensing day three and four into the same video because well, my battery died yesterday. I didn't realize it. And I also was just busy most of the day. I didn't get a lot done until last night. I just didn't get a chance to get the camera on. But we got a lot done. So let me show you what we got done in day three and then day four. All right, so the rear diff is back in place. All reinstalled. I had a couple of my buddies come over last night and give me a hand putting it back in. It's welded and plated inside, which I'm pretty sure I got a video of that. Um, so the rear differential, this is all back in and complete. Refilled, done. The bracket for it's back on, done. The cover's back on. Drive shaft's back in. All the shifter linkage is back together. Pretty sure, yeah, I tightened everything last night, just making sure. All this is back together. So everything in the rear drive, even the exhaust bracket's back on. Everything in the rear drivetrain half of this is complete. So all that remains is to pull these front axles apart and cut them in half. And then put the exhaust back on and we're done. It's that simple. That's literally all that's left. The next thing we're going to try and do is break this castle up for me. Which this should be fun. I think what we can do is stick a flathead or something in there to lock it in place. But I don't have anyone here to hold the brake for me. Which is certainly be helpful right now. That should work.
Alright guys, so where we're at. <laughs> what a fight. We got both the castle nuts off finally. This side and the passenger side I'm being really stuck. I even had to heat it up a little and that finally went. So here's my trick for you guys if it's just you doing this. If you have normal rotors, like I mean these are drilled slotted, but they're still normal on the inside with the fins. You put a flat head in so that way it rides on your caliper. And now, because you want to turn the nut this way to loosen it, you put it on this side, and on the other side you would put it on the bottom, because opposites. Anyways, so now we're gonna figure out how to get the uh, axles out, which I think I'm just gonna have to unbolt my coil over and tilt it out. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, now this is kind of a rudimentary way, but because I'm trying to not have to get an alignment after this is done, but I know that there's a good chance I'm gonna have to, I'm putting this magnetic angle finder that I have, magnetic protractor on here to see where we're at. And it looks like we're at one degree. Huh. I'm also doing this for myself to remember, but we're at one degree leaning in. So I'm gonna check the other side and see what this one pulls at. Okay, so the alignment's not totally right on this car in the first place. This one's showing about two degrees. So obviously we're gonna wanna set them both to probably about two degrees for angle for, well, drifting. So anyways, I'm gonna try and unbolt this and figure this out. Once I have one side figure out how to get apart, I'll show you the other side. So I don't wanna be a total moron. All right, so I figured I'd catch you guys up on where we're at with this because <laughs> It's being a little bit messy. So the driver's side is basically frozen in there. Like it's stuck, stuck. I've been beating and beating on it. So I just spray it with some blaster and if I have to, I'll hit it with a little heat, but don't worry. We'll get this side apart. Everything will be okay. I want to show you the passenger side because this front axle, I already ripped the boot a couple of years ago. So this one's been replaced. So all I do is take my center punch right in the middle. So they don't beat the hell out of it. And my hammer. And I whacked it, and as you can see, as you can see, <laughs> don't mind that, this one's ready to come apart. So I just got to pull it all apart, and I should be able to get this out pretty easily. So I think we're going to tear into this side first, because this one looks like it'll come apart moderately easier. And then we'll come back to this side. Alright, so I got my first out here, finally. What a fight. There it is. So, <laughs> what you gotta do here, <laughs> a lot. So you take it apart here, I take my caliper off to get enough room. Now this bracket stays on, it's fine. Strap my caliper up out the way, disconnect the bolts on here, and then to get just enough room for clearance, I had to drop out my steering bar too. So, we're gonna have to make sure we put this side back together so that way everything stays proper. Actually, it shouldn't matter, but still. So we got the first axle out, and as you can see, this one's got a, this one's twined on both ends. Some are, some aren't. So we're just gonna take this apart and see what it looks like in this end. It's just gonna go back together. Why don't you cut it here? This end's just gonna go back together like it sits. This one I just gotta figure out if, uh, once I take it apart, if I'm going to need something to secure it or not, or if it'll just stay in there. Why don't I say hi? Okay, whatever. Don't say hi. We got the first one from the passenger side cut apart. That's all that remains for the outside. We're on our way to make it rear wheel drive, right Brandon? What do you think? You think we're going to crash it? Okay, we'll go with that. So you got to cut the rest of it apart and um... Do the other side, once I get that one apart. So now I gotta cut this part because I need the inside, this. Yeah, I see the super parts in the garbage can. How typical. Right? All right, we're gonna keep on going. You know, for March 26th, it's really nice out today. Look at that. It's 611, 56 degrees out. It's only the end of March. I'll take it. 
Anyways, struggling because splines in here, the axle was basically seized to them. So we had to heat it and beat the hell out of it. And now we got it apart. But on a positive note, this side is back together. And that's how we're leaving it to keep the dirt off that. Because you really want to keep this to hold this hub together. Yeah, you have to keep it to hold, you know, your hub on and whatnot. And it has your speed sensor in it, which is this, because it reads the teeth, how fast you're going. So this side's basically done. So now on this side, what you have to do, this is how you have to do it, because this is how I had to do it, and it's still tight. So you take your caliper off, you don't, I thought you did on this side, you don't have to take your rotor off, you can leave your rotor on, but I took this side off. You take your caliper off, you unbolt it from here, you beat your axle out that way, and then you actually have to drop your tie rod for your steering rack out, so you have enough angle in this to pop this out. And then it releases from there, you pull it out, it, just, it unlocks in the transmission, you pull it out, and you're left with, let's see if I can see it, that. Not to the hole inside of your transmission. So obviously you can't have that because of dirt and whatnot. Now it might be different for different years and everything, but this is for the 05 RS. So, what you have to do is, well, I cut one end off, clean it up, and put it back together, kind of. I gotta cut this end apart and put this back in the transmission. Alright guys, so I know there's kind of been a gap in between all the videos because just because I've been busy, it's a lot harder to daily vlog than you think, especially when your friends are constantly in and out. So it's done. We got the knuckle side of the hub cut off and installed, and we were able to take the other yeah, the knuckle side, we were able to take the other side apart and put it in the transmission. And it's done. Like 100%, it runs and drives. We took it for a rip last night and it is totally sketchy. <laughs> like, really sketchy. But it's done. So, I'm gonna make another video just giving you guys a quick rundown of exactly how to do this. If you don't wanna watch this whole thing, I'll just give you a quick, of, all right, here's everything you need to do to do it. But it's done now. So, <laughs> now we can take it and pull it outside. And I'll show you, now I'm just in the grass here, but it does burnouts, which is pretty freaking sick for a Subaru. And there's a couple little things you have to go over there. You have to re-grease those front, uh, the other half of the axle I put back in, I need to grease those because they make a little bit of noise. And I need new tires really bad. So yeah, I'm gonna take it out and show you what it does and probably take it out and bathe it today because it's really dirty. So I'll catch you there. All right, so you guys can probably hear it out there warming up. Now just to prove to you that it is truly rear wheel drive. Ah uh, yes, it's on the grass, whatever. We're gonna do a little standing burnout on the grass. <laughs> you can see that just the rear wheel spin. And then another video, I'll take you guys out with the GoPro and everything. You can hear, you can hear the, bat, the, the rear head jumping around and everything. It's crazy, it's like a drift car now. So I'll show you that. I think that'll probably be the end of this video. And the end of this series for now that we actually converted a Subaru to rear-wheel drive in a week. So that's it.